good morning students i am dr k ramesh working as professor of mechanical engineering uh, in government college of technology coimbatore so first of all uh, i should thank our commission of technical education uh, for giving us this opportunity to conduct this uh, gate video lectures uh, that is gate series of video lectures and uh, that is uh, students are going to appear for the year 2021 I also thank our principal, Dr. P. Thamare, Madam, for giving such an opportunity to conduct such video lectures. Thank you, ma'am. So now, so in this class, so I am going to, so this video lecture, so I am going to give presentation and some problems about uh, internal combustion engines and also about power engineering. So I have classified this uh, my video lecture into five parts. so i'll show you what are they and uh, in this class i am going to give you uh, just an outline of this uh, gate pattern and what are the questions the weightage of marks for each and every uh, subjects and i am going to deal about this internal combustion engines and especially on auto and diesel cycle so this auto and diesel cycle we can see problems Uh, that is how the questions will be so for that you should know the basics so what are the basics that we have to do uh, while working out this uh, problems so as far as this uh, thermal sciences are considered so and that too in auto and uh, auto cycle or diesel cycle or uh, especially in air standard cycles so we can, we are getting the questions in gate which are related to so pvt relations which are related to pvt and also related to this mean effective pressure and all so you should know the pvt relation so generally we know the characteristic gas equation pv is equal to mrt and this relation can also be given for some process suppose if the process takes place from 1 to 2 so we can say that p1 v1 this uh, that is pv by T is equal to M R, and this one can be taken as P1 V1 by T1 is equal to P2 V2 by T2 that is equal to M R. So you can have a PVT relation. So in this, so you can write P1 by T1 is equal to P2 V2 by T2 into V1. So what are the unknowns? Can easily be found out with the help of this PVT relation. Okay. and uh, one more thing is if it is an adiabatic process so or an reversible isentropic process so you should know the pvt relation so that is p v and t and this can be written as p 1 to 1 relation so that is p 1 by p 2 v 2 by v 1 then t 1 by t 2 so you see how i am writing this relation okay so 1 by gamma 1 by gamma minus 1 so sometimes you may get relations on this p and v and sometimes you may get the relations on v and t r p and t okay so this gamma refers to adiabatic index or the same for polytropic so gamma will be replaced by n okay so this is a pvt relation and if it is for mean effective pressure mep so what happens so we know the formula for mean effective pressure so that is work done by this stroke volume so that is v suffix s yes. work done by stroke volume so we should know the unit conversion so not only in case of mean effective pressure and also in case of this um, uh, what is the characteristic gas equation so that is pv is equal to mrt so because most of the students are doing mistakes in this area so by uh, substituting unit you are uh, by substituting different units so you are getting a uh, wrong answers okay so now you can see here so first we can go to this p v is equal to m r t so this should always be in kilogram this m should always be in kilogram so how we will get kilogram this pressure should always be in newton per meter square and volume should be in meter cube so this is equal to m so this m is nothing but mass and this characteristic this j that is r is should be always in terms of joule per kilogram kelvin so most of the students are substituting this value in terms of kilojoule and you may not able to get the appropriate answers in t in kelvin 
so these two will get cancelled and here you can see that so it is meter so newton meter so is equal to this is a mass a joule per kilogram so here you can see one joule is nothing but one newton meter so these two will get cancelled and mass can be returned so are substituted in the in its, in its unit that is kilogram so you have to so uh, ensure that this r should always be in joule per kilogram kelvin and one more thing is in case of mean effective pressure so what happens in mean effective pressure that is mep is equal to work done by this stroke volume so this work done is uh, in terms of kilojoule by stroke volume in meter cube so this kilojoule so we know that kilo is 10 power 3 into this joule per meter cube so this has to be substituted in terms of bar this mean effective pressure has to be substituted in terms of bar so now you can see here so this MEP will be equal to 10 power 3 into 1 joule is now only I told you 1 joule is 1 Newton meter so Newton meter divided by this meter cube so if you cancel these two you will get 10 power 3 Newton per meter square so but this has to be given in terms of bar so 1 bar is 1 into 10 power 5 Newton per meter square so you can see here if it is if you want to substitute this value in terms of bar so you can find that uh, value that is 10 power 3 divided by 10 power 5 if you multiply by the term if you get the answer for this mean effective pressure by substituting in terms of this kilojoule per meter cube you have to multiply that answer by 10 power 3 and divide by 10 power 5 so or otherwise so you can write as 10 power 3 into 10 power minus 5 that is nothing but 10 power minus 2 if you multiply by 1 by 100 so you will get the exact answer in terms of bar okay so now you can see the expected weightage of marks for this uh, mechanical engineering so you can see engineering mechanics strength of materials then heat transfer so you can see in heat transfer and uh, this uh, thermodynamics and uh, applications then refrigeration and air condition so the, all these comes under this uh, thermal sciences and you can see so around 6 plus 12 18 18 plus 1 and 19 around 20 or 20 point something marks so argument for this uh, thermal sciences so now in this thermodynamics and applications so it has a weightage of around 12.75 marks okay so now in this uh, for auto cycle and diesel cycle that is for power engineering and uh, for ic engines so you will get around 5 to 6 marks so uh, weightage of marks so we can see that in this uh, what is that in this mechanical engineering subjects so this is the pattern for this uh, gate so the number of questions are around 65 the total marks is 100 and the type of questions are multiple choice questions and then numerical answer type you will get some statistical value for answer for that uh, question okay so that is uh, there are two number of sections one is uh, general apt and other one is with uh, uh, engineering mechanics and mechanical engineering subjects then general apt for 15 marks so for this general apt uh, for 15 marks you will get around five uh, one mark question and uh, five two mark questions and uh, for this engineering mathematics and mechanical engineering subjects around 85 marks so 25 one marks and 32 marks so you will get around 85 marks the total time duration is three hours and uh, there is no sectional time limit for this section 1 and section 2 so you can uh, appear as you like okay so this uh, multiple choice questions as uh, negative marking so for uh, one mark you have one by three uh, you are of each you have one mark uh, for wrong answers and for two mark you have two by third of each two mark wrong answers so there are, there are no negative marks for this numerical answer type okay so now we can enter into this internal combustion engines so i have classified my lectures so into five lectures as i told you earlier 
so that is lecture 1 auto cycle and diesel cycle and then lecture 2 dual cycle and its performance of engines and in power power engineering so we can see in lecture 3 you can see simple gas turbine and in lecture 4 rank and cycle then compressors in compressors we can see reciprocating rotary and axial flow compressors because when you when you look at this so you will get mostly you will get questions in the problems in this uh, auto and diesel cycle so everything you have to think okay so one if you know the basics so then only you can able to answer the question okay so if the basics are not known to you you may not able to answer even a single question okay so you may not get the same type of questions in each and every year it is different it is entirely different so everything is meant for testing your um, iq on you on your respective subjects so and then a dual cycle and performance so you may get uh, so one question from this area this from this auto diesel and dual cycle and uh, probably you may get questions on this ranking cycle so you may get uh, one or two questions in ranking cycle and also you may get uh, problems in this uh, rotary in this axial flow compressors okay so so you have to be to at least uh, you can score of around uh, six to eight marks so in this area especially in this internal combustion engines and this uh, power engineering okay so you can refer to the previous year question paper also so you can see so you there are no questions uh, there, there, there is a no, there is no question paper so without this uh, rank and cycle okay and uh, some questions on this uh, diesel cycle or dual cycle okay and in lecture one we can see about auto cycle and diesel cycle before it uh, so we can see some basics which are related to this uh, engine okay so it is a device which transforms one form of energy into another that is chemical uh, that is which transforms the chemical energy of the fuel into thermal energy and that uh, that is uh, made into some useful work and this is classified into this external combustion engines and uh, internal combustion engine and this is the general classification of those uh, heat engines so in case of external combustion engines you, you know that combustion takes place outside the engine but in internal combustion engine so it takes place within the engine cylinder and uh, classification of this internal combustion engine two stroke and four stroke engines so two stroke you, you can see that so in one revolution of the crankshaft you are getting the power and here in four stroke two revolutions of the crankshaft and here you can see that so uniform turning moment for this uh, two stroke engines and a light flywheel is uh, enough for this uh, two stroke engines and here non uniform the turning moment diagram will not be uniform and you are in need of some heavier flywheels okay then in case of ca engines so that uh, comes under that is in ca engines so a high uh, uh, that is especially that uh, in ca engines so these uh, are uh, this works on this uh, diesel cycle or otherwise this constant pressure heat addition cycle here the fuel it is directly injected into this uh, combustion chamber so at high pressure at the end of the com uh, compression stroke so for this what are the things that are needed a fuel pump and injector are uh, necessary things and in case of SA engines so it works on auto cycle so and uh, mostly the gasoline uh, engines they are this uh, spark ignition engines and uh, here it works on this uh, con constant auto cycle or otherwise it is called as a constant volume heat addition cycle so here so a gaseous mixture of fuel and the air is introduced during the suction stroke and a carburetor and an ignition system are necessary so modern engines have these uh, gasoline injections so these are the main components and so uh, in this if you if you go for the components of the engine if uh, if you are expecting some questions so you may get questions on so not about its uh, functions about its uh, material and so what is the material that uh, each and every part is made up of so especially uh, what is the material in which piston is made up of what is the material in which piston rings are made up of okay then connecting rod so you may get a question in uh, like match the following uh, or in uh, uh, in in case of uh, apt or that is multiple choice questions okay 
so cylinder so just it is an overall view of uh, these uh, parts so just you know about all this so you when you go for this cylinder so you can see it is a main part and uh, it, it withstand around 50 bar and the temperature above this 50 bar and temperature above 2000 degree centigrade so the material so in which this cylinder has to be made so should bear these uh, pressures and uh, temperatures and you can see here so the ordinary engine is, is made up of cast iron and heavy duty engines are made up of steel alloys or aluminium alloys okay uh, that is cast steel in the multi cylinder engine the cylinders are cast in one block they are known as cylinder block okay so you may have different parts everything is uh, has a only one uh, block okay so that is called a cylinder block then cylinder head so the top of the cylinder is covered by this is a cylinder head over which this inlet valve exhaust valve spark plug uh, in case of uh, si engines in case of ci engine injectors are mounted a copper or asbestos gasket is provided so what is the reason for this okay so so as in you may get this question in assertion and reason okay so uh, a copper or asbestos gasket so that is provided between the engine cylinder and the uh, cylinder head to make an airtight joint and when you go for piston so it is made up of generally it is made up of aluminium alloy this piston so because it has a good heat conducting capacity and a greater strength at a higher temperature so piston they are made up of okay then uh, piston rings so these are housed in the uh, circumferential grooves so which are provided on the outer surface of the piston and the, they are made up of steel alloys which retain elastic properties even at uh, high temperatures so in piston rings you have two types and uh, in some cases in uh, small engines you have three types of rings also okay so when you go for piston rings so these piston rings is seal the combustion chamber so it transfers the heat to the cylinder wall and control the oil consumption so a piston ring it always seals the combustion chamber through some inherent and applied pressure okay so this inherent pressure how we can determine this inherent pressure it is always determined by this uncompressed or free piston ring gap so these are all some of the questions how this inherent pressure can be determined so this free piston ring gap so that is the distance between the two ends of a piston ring so in an uncompressed state so typically when you go for the greater that is the greater the free piston ring gap the more force the piston ring applies when compressed in the cylinder bore so a piston ring must be provided or must provide a predictable and a positive radial fit between the cylinder wall and the running surface of the piston ring for an efficient seal okay so in addition to this inherent pressure a piston ring it also seals the combustion chamber through the applied pressure from this combustion gases to the piston ring so and also it causing it to expand so sometimes this expand so some piston rings have the chamfered edge opposite the running face that is the running surface so this chamfered edge so it causes the piston ring to twist when not affected by this combustion gas pressure so generally we have this uh, rings is one is uh, compression ring uh, then oil rings but when you go for small engines uh, it includes compression ring then wiper ring and oil ring so this compression ring so it is uh, uh, <clears throat> a taper faced compression ring is a piston ring that has approximately 1 degree taper angle uh, on the running surface so this taper so it provides a mild wiping action to prevent any excess oil from reaching the combustion chamber so you should know the uh, how what is the reason for providing this comp uh, compression ring okay and when you go for this uh, wiper ring so sometimes they are called as scraper ring or uh, napier ring or backup compression uh, rings so these are all provided in these small engines so the taper angle uh, it provides co contact it, it provides the contact that routes excess oil on the cylinder wall to the oil ring for return to the oil reservoir so a wiper ring incorrectly installed what will happen so with the tapered angle closest to the compression ring results in excessive oil cons consumption 
so these are some of the questions you may get suppose if the wiper ring is incorrectly installed what will happen so it it goes for excessive oil consumption so next one is the oil ring so oil ring it includes two thin rails or running surfaces okay so the oil ring has the highest uh, uh, inherent pressure of the three rings on the piston so this has the higher highest inherent pressure so compared to this uh, compression ring and this wiper ring okay so this piston it uh, suppose when this oil ring so when you go for these oil rings they are located on each side of the expander so the expander usually contains multiple slots or windows to return this oil to the piston ring groove so the oil ring uses inherent piston ring pressure expander pressure and the high unit pressure provided by the small running surface of the thin rails so this is about this compression rings uh, that is uh, about this piston rings so you have three types that is compression wiper and the oil rings so in the, uh, these wiper rings are provided only in the uh, small engines the next one is the connecting rod so it converts the reciprocating motion of the piston into the circular motion of the crankshaft in the working stroke so the smaller end so it the smaller end of the connecting rod is connected with the piston by gudge and pin and the bigger end is connected with the uh, crank with the crank pin so you should know where the gudge and pin lies and where this crank pin lies so this connecting rod is it is made up of special steel alloys or aluminum alloys so which are used for this uh, manufacturing of this uh, connecting rod and when you go for crankshaft so this crankshaft it converts this reciprocating motion of the piston into this uh, rotary motion with the help of this uh, connecting rod so some special steel alloys are used for this uh, manufacturing of this uh, crankshaft then crank case so it houses the cylinder and this uh, uh, crankshaft of the ic engine and also it acts as a sump for the lubricating oil and flywheel it acts as a temporary reservoir to store this energy okay and there are some terminologies ic engine terminology the cylinder bore uh, piston area all these are known to you for a uh, uh, mechanical engineers they know about cylinder bore it is nothing but the dia and the area then stroke length the distance traveled between top dead center and the bottom dead center so when you multiply this area and this length you will get volume that is called uh, this nothing but the stroke volume okay and dead centers you have two types of dead center the piston up to which it reaches the maximum position is known as the in the top is is known as top dead center and when it reaches the bottom it is known as the bottom dead center okay <clears throat> next one is displacement volume that i told you now so when you multiply the area and the length so you will get uh, the stroke volume so that is the distance traveled from tdc to bdc or otherwise bdc to tdc and clearance volume some uh, space is provided at the top that is above the piston ground in order to avoid the damage uh, for the piston ground so that uh, the uh, yeah yeah are occupied at that space is nothing but the clearance volume and the cylinder volume so how will you find the total cylinder volume so if you add this stroke volume and this clearance volume if you add this stroke volume and the clearance volume so you will get the total cylinder volume so stroke volume is uh, determined with the help of the formula pi by 4 d square into l and this uh, clearance volume so will be given to you and you can find the total cylinder volume okay so then compression ratio that is given by r that is the ratio between this uh, stroke volume and clearance volume okay so example a problem is a, a question is given to you so in this type of questions are asked in a gate so you can see here so piston uh, valves crankshaft and piston rings are arranged in list 1 and the respective materials on which these are made are arranged in list 2 okay so the codes are given to you so you have to match the uh, match this and you have to find the exact answer for this okay so you can see here so piston so you can see here piston then valves crankshaft piston rings now only we have seen that so piston rings are made up of cast iron right so and the piston is made up of some cast steel okay some cast steel so this a you can see that four 
so you have two options the main success in this type of questions is you have to eliminate you have to eliminate the way in which you are going to eliminate the wrong answer so it is very important in these kind of objective type questions exams okay so you have to eliminate the wrong answer you should know the success to eliminate the wrong answer so you can see here so for uh, four and uh, uh, the a for the answer for a is four is given in two choices one is a and the other one is c okay and you can see that uh, the other one is piston rings that is cast iron so you see the other one is piston. the same option is given for a and c the same option is given but only when you know this uh, in which material this wall and this crankshaft is made so you can able to answer right so you have to be thorough with all the materials and how you can uh, answer these questions so even if you miss a single topic you may not able to get the, the marks okay so <clears throat> so you have to be thorough with all those so walls so walls are uh, generally made up of some special alloys so and this crankshaft it is it is made up of alloy steel that we have seen now but uh, i have not given anything about uh, walls okay so walls are um, see, especially they are made up of some special alloy steel so for b the answer is 3 so 4 3 3 and a crankshaft it is made up of some alloy steels so 4 3 2 1 so the answer is a so uh, how will you identify the walls so this will also be a question so when the walls are uh, based on the color so you know that the atmospheric air is colorless so the inlet wall it is generally it is uh, aluminum coated that is it is colorless and you know the exhaust wall so the exhaust wall will send the flue gases flue gases are dark in color so it is coated with carbon black so by that you can easily identify with the color and with also with the size okay so so the based on which is larger and smaller you can easily able to identify the inlet wall and the, the exhaust walls okay and one more thing in case of uh, this uh, two stroke and uh, four stroke engines also okay that is how will you identify uh, the uh, vehicle you don't have any brand in that simply with your naked eye so you have to identify whether it is a two stroke engine or four stroke engine so we know that in two stroke engine this uh, uh, what is the spark plug is mounted on the uh, top of this uh, cylinder okay so in, in, uh, because it has to produce uh, power at one revolution of the crankshaft but in case of four strokes it is uh, mounted on the sides of the cylinder so but simply by viewing at your naked eye so you can able to identify so which is a two stroke and which is a uh, four stroke so there is no need to check the walls or ports or nothing else is needed simply by the position of this is spark plug you can able to identify which is a two stroke engine and which is a four stroke engine and now we are going to cycles so cycle we know the some repeated series of thermodynamic operations they occur in an appropriate order so uh, that is some series occurs for example here you can see um, an isotropic process that we have studied in thermodynamics an isothermal then isentropic then isochoric isobaric so all these process they occur in series and produces some useful work so they the, that is called as cycle okay and what are the assumptions that are made in this air standard cycles so it should be a perfect gas okay then that means it should it should obey all the gas laws and uh, some the mass entering uh, inside the engine cylinder it remains same throughout this working period so that is m is kept as constant but uh, that is not at all possible so m is kept as constant and uh, the process is reversible so once you stop at any place it reaches the same throughout the uh, through the same path in which it comes so that is also not possible but we assume that it is comes under air standard cycles so that is the assumptions so then supply of heat from a constant higher temperature source so not from chemical reaction and rejection of heat to a constant low temperature source so that is travel the travel of heat energy from a, a higher higher energy level to lower energy level 
okay and then no heat losses from the surroundings to the uh, from the system to the surroundings okay so that is also not possible we assume all this then only we may able to uh, achieve that highest possible efficiency okay and then constant specific heat that is cp and cv value are kept as constant so since we uh, take this uh, cycle it works on air so air is the working fluid there so we have to go for constant specific heat values for air and the carnot cycle you can see this is a carnot cycle so this is an ideal cycle so in this cycle you will get the maximum possible efficiency so that means when you compare all the other air standard cycles with this carnot cycle this carnot cycle only will give the highest possible efficiency okay so that means greater than those cycles it is not 100 percentage it is greater than those that is other cycles like auto diesel dual abraton and cycles okay so carnot cycle is an ideal cycle in which all the process constitute a reversible cycle so it consists of so you can see here it consists of two isothermal process and two this reversible adiabatic process so you can see here so that is an expansion process and then uh, two expansion process and then two compression process the expansion or adiabatic and this compression or isothermal here so here you can see that uh, the here the expansion are so you can see that the volume changes uh, that is volume changes from uh, you want to two so one to two you can see the entropy remains constant it is compression process and two to three uh, two to three you can see entropy remains constant it is an adiabatic process so in that way so you can this uh, carnot cycle form such a process so you can see here one to two is what and two to three then 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 so the efficiency is nothing but the formula is work done output by input the output is nothing but the amount of work done and the input is nothing but the amount of heat energy that is supplied so based on that we arrive this formula that is 1 minus t1 by t3 so if you you can uh, this notations can uh, be up to the students they can make their own notations uh, t1 someone makes t1 as the higher temperature and t2 is the lower temperature and it is up to the students to take all this but you should know the basic so t1 should be the temperature at process 1 and t3 should be the temperature at process 3 since the efficiency as should be always less than 1 so this value should always be less than 1 okay then only 1 minus that value will comes less than that and so it's it is 100 percentage efficiency is maximum efficiency is 100 percentage and the efficiency should always be less than 1 okay so in case of uh, carnot cycle so a low mean effective pressure is achieved in carnot cycle so what's the reason for this it is because of low work output okay so most of you will write it uh, since it gives uh, uh, it is the uh, uh, what is that uh, it gives the highest possible efficiency so the mean effective pressure will also be higher so but that is not so the carnot cycle has a low mean effective pressure because of its very low work output okay now we can go to auto cycle so in auto cycle you can see pv diagram and ts diagram and the efficiencies and then mean effective pressure so i told you in the initially i have told you how you can convert this mean effective pressure that is how you can write this mean effective pressure in terms of bar so and from you, you are getting some question, questions on this mean effective pressure efficiencies and this pvt relations so you should be thorough with the derivation also okay so and also the mean effective pressure derivation but it is very difficult to uh, remember the formulas for mean effective pressure okay but for auto cycle for auto diesel and dual so simply you have to know the formula as uh, our definition based on the definition you have to arrive that is it is the ratio between the work uh, done and this uh, stro uh, stroke volume okay so you have to know this with this only you can work out this uh, the problems which are given in this uh, that is yeah standard cycles especially in auto diesel and uh, dual okay so it is a auto cycle is a four stroke uh, in engine is in a is a internal combustion engine 
so the piston completes four separate uh, strokes while turning a crankshaft through two complete rotations okay so here that is a stroke it refers to full travel of the piston along the cylinder in one of the two reciprocal directions so you can see you, you should this uh, kind of statement should be known to you so sometimes they will change this and they will given so which which of the statement is true or which of the statements are correct okay so you have to know all these things okay the four stroke uh, cycle petrol engines they operate on this uh, auto cycle or otherwise constant volume cycle we all know these uh, four strokes suction compression power and exhaust so this is the diagram which represents this uh, auto cycle so an intake is there so this is an intake stroke and from intake stroke to compression stroke then compression to power then power to exhaust so initially so um, the air is the air is made or let it in inside the engine cylinder and then it is compressed at a high compression the fuel is injected and then power is produced the piston moves downwards and then it moves upwards and then the after the extra extracting power from this so the exhaust gases are sent out so this is a, a small a simple explanation for this auto cycle just you know the concepts for this okay so this is that uh, pv diagram for this uh, auto cycle so you can see here so so 1 to 2 is isentropic compression and 2 to 3 heat addition takes place and 3 to 4 expansion process and 4 to 1 the heat rejection takes place so you have two constant volume process and two isentropic process a reversible adiabatic process so two constant volume and two uh, adiabatic or reversible adiabatic or isentropic process okay so so if you want to know about this uh, ts diagram so you simply keep a mirror like this so you can see the image on the mirror if you see the image on the mirror so that will be uh, like this so you just you see so if you do if you want to draw a mirror like this so you assume this as the mirror so you see here so this is the ts diagram so you can see this part will come and here it will be like this okay so one two so one to two is isentropic process the entropy remains constant here one to two then two to three heat addition takes place the temperature increases 2 to 3 temperature increases and uh, this is the place at which the maximum temperature is obtained and 3 to 4 3 to 4 is an expansion process the entropy remains constant and 4 to 1 is the heat rejection process at a constant one so these two are and these two are constant volume process these two are constant volume process so in auto cycle you have two constant volume process and two isentropic process okay so you may get problems uh, you may get uh, some questions uh, so based on this process also okay And the next is the linear distance that is uh, what is the bore and what is the displacement volume and uh, what is r r is the compression ratio so you can see bore is nothing but the diameter and displacement volume so what is displacement volume the volume added in moving from tdc to the bdc uh, that is the volume of the cylinder it is defined by the stroke height and this bore dia so if you multiply this area and the stroke length so you will get this displacement volume okay so the compression ratio when you go for r compression ratio is a volume ratio it is always greater than 1 compression ratio is always greater than 1 because the total cylinder volume is always uh, uh, bigger than this uh, uh, what is that the clearance volume so when you divide these two you will get a higher value so which is greater than 1 okay so this r is v max it is the maximum volume by the minimum volume so you will get so r which uh, r should always be greater than 1 so for example when you go for So, for example, you if you take this uh, auto cycle, this PV is 
so one two three and four so you can see here so this is the total cylinder volume so this is nothing but v1 and this is v2 and this this one is v1 and this is v2 so now this r is given as v1 by v2 so since this is uh, larger this v2 v1 is uh, larger so the value of uh, these two are directly proportional to you will get a, a, a higher value that is this always be this greater than this one so this v1 you can see here r is nothing but the clearance volume plus displacement volume so that is r can be written as this v1 can be written as the sum of these two am i right okay so this volume that is v1 minus v2 is nothing but the stroke volume and this vc is nothing but the clearance volume so there's a sum of this stroke volume and this clearance volume it refers to v1 by this clearance volume okay so r is equal to vs plus vc divided by vc the ratio between this total cylinder volume and the clearance volume is nothing but the compression ratio okay so all these concepts should be known to you we can see the problems on this so how you are getting different kinds of problems okay so now this is the pv and the ts diagram represented for this auto cycle which i told you earlier so you can see it is just like a mirror okay so you can easily able to identify this pv and the ts diagram and the efficiency when you go for the efficiency is so eta so eta that is efficiency is always output by input so the output is nothing but here it is the work done output is nothing but the work done divided by what is the input input is the heat energy supplied so what is the work done it is the difference between this how much of amount of heat energy is supplied and how much amount of heat energy is rejected so that is qs minus qr divided by qs so we know this so at last if you substitute all this so you will get 1 minus t1 by t2 that is equal to 1 minus 1 by r power gamma minus 1 so in all the cases so if you take auto diesel or dual cycle so the value of this efficiency is is always given in terms of volume okay either in uh, if you go for uh, auto cycle it is in compression ratio if you go for diesel cycle it is compression and cut off ratio if you go for a limited pressure or dual combustion cycle uh, you are getting this compression and cut off and then expansion ratio okay so you are getting all this uh, ratios so the, the ratios in terms of everything is in terms of volume okay so this relation that is r is equal to v1 by v2 so if it is obtained you can see here from this uh, pv diagram itself so you are saying that r is equal to v1 uh, by v2 so here instead of v1 you can write as v4 and instead of v2 you can write v3 so that is the thing it is given here v1 is equal to v4 and v2 is equal to v3 okay so these are all some of the statements that you have to know so the clearly the efficiency of the ideal auto cycle it always increases by making r larger and r by increasing the value of k so now you know the formula for efficiency that is 1 minus 1 by r whole power gamma minus 1 okay so this r if you make this r larger this here in k is nothing but gamma okay so you, this is a, this this may be written as k as per this statement okay so r power k minus 1 suppose if we increase this value so what happens to eta so for example if r is equal to 6 okay then if r is equal to 7 if r is equal to 8 so you see here 6 power so this this one 6 power suppose if it is 1.4 minus 1 right so 1.4 minus 1 is nothing but 0.4 6 power 0.4 so this becomes 7 power 0.4 so you see here the power increase the this value increases 
as long as this value increases this will get decrease and if you uh, subtract this with a lower value the efficiency will increase okay so as long as you increase this so you will get yeah highest possible efficiency that is as standard efficiency on the same case for this uh, k also so if you go for k as 0.4 0.5 0.6 so this value will uh, increase and later on this value will get decrease and then so if you get a uh, yeah, lesser value in this side so the efficiency will increase so that that is a simple concept so the efficiency ideal auto cycle efficiency increases for larger r value and for and by increasing the value of k or otherwise gamma and the next one is the value of k increases for air compared to co2 and other larger molecules like ethane and octane uh, but falls as t rises okay so the their properties are entirely different so uh, this is a statement so you have to remember this statement and the ideal cycle efficiency behaviors are also seen with actual four cycle engines so that the real engine design can attempt to improve the efficiency by optimizing the value of r r k so in real uh, ideal and real are entirely different uh, with this uh, well, so the optimization um, optimizing the value of r and k has to be carried out okay the value of r for si that is spa uh, si engine that is si ic engines can be increased uh, by about that is in case of gasoline engines or petrol engines in case of gasoline or petrol engines the baseline value is about 6 to 10 okay is about 6 to 10 and uh, it, uh, you can increase this by about 12 or 13 by increasing the compression ratio but this value so that is eta is equal to 1 minus 1 by r whole power gamma minus so you can increase this but uh, uh, due to practical difficulties so you may not able to increase this to certain extent because so if you want to increase the value of r you have to go for higher octane rating so how higher octane rating is achieved so but it is uh, uh, very expensive this higher octane rating achieving this higher octane rating is expensive and moreover so it pollutes the atmosphere by uh, giving out this uh, tetra ethyl lead as a uh, uh, polluted component okay so you may not able to go for this higher rating so this uh, higher rating it, in, it it gives you the performance of the engine okay so higher r uh, it requires the gasoline of higher octane rating so but uh, it is limited okay so this is needed to prevent premature auto ignition that is engine on so as well, when you improve this uh, uh, octane rating so you may go for this um if you want to achieve this higher r so you have to in increase this value of uh, octane rating but you may be subjected to uh, this uh, what is that engine knocking okay so that is not possible to improve after this but uh, this can be achieved beyond this value 10 but it is limited okay so the engine components includes piston you you all know this so so the engine components including piston cylinder valves and bearings must also be made stronger to withstand this higher r so when you go for this uh, actual uh, spark ignition four stroke engines so the thermal efficiency is achieved so only around the 25% to 35 percentage so compared to the theoretical uh, values for ideal auto but it uh, of around 50 to uh, 60 percentage okay so actual and uh, because in actual uh, fuel is supplied uh, with the air but when you go for this uh, ideal cycle only air is used as the working fluid so uh, the efficiency differs so actual uh, you will get only less efficiency so the formula for work output so that is heat supplied this mcv into t3 minus t2 and heat rejected is mcv into t4 minus t1 so you can see that uh, uh, pv and ts diagram so in in ts diagram so you can see the this one that is 1 to 2 
then 3 and 4 so heat supplied so heat is supplied at so you can see in PV diagram so 1 2 3 4 P V so heat is supplied so this is the region where heat energy is supplied and here heat is rejected okay so heat is supplied during this process so the heat energy at constant at constant volume you can see here so let the mass be mkg and the specific heat is con cv and the change in difference between these two that is t3 and t2 so you will get the amount of heat energy that is supplied and amount of heat energy that is rejected is from 4 to 1 okay so that is 4 to 1 so t4 minus t1 the temperature that is a t4 minus t1 so qr is mcv into t4 minus t1 so when you simplify this so you will get this uh, what is that efficiency uh, so that is eta is equal to qs minus qr divided by this qs so mcv into t3 minus t2 uh, minus mcv into t4 minus t1 divided by mcv into t3 minus t2 you simplify all those so you will get the value of efficiency okay so here the pressure ratios when you go for the pressure ratios you can see here so p3 p2 and p4 and p1 so they are same the ratio between p3 and p2 and p4 and p1 so you have to look at this pv diagram so they are same this, there are some of these are some of the relations so even you can write this relation as p3 by p4 is equal to p2 by p1 so interchanging the this numerator and denominator so you may arrive these relations also so these are all used to find the unknown data these relations are used to find the unknown data in problems the mean effective pressure so as i told you it is a fictitious uh, pressure which reflecting the concept p del uh, p del v so it is a fictitious pressure so the suppose if it is operated on the piston during the entire power stroke so it would produce the same amount of network as that produced during the actual cycle so if this is we assume that so if it is operated on the piston during the entire power stroke so it would produce the same amount of network out that is produced during the actual cycle you see in the diagram so you can see that so this the mean effective pressure this is the mean effective pressure the, that is the, the difference between this of maximum volume and minimum volume so with this you can if you, if you want to find this network done so you can see it is the product of this mean effective pressure under this volume you can see here so network is mean effective pressure into piston area into length so this area into length is nothing but a volume that is nothing but displacement volume so if you want to find this mean effective pressure so you bring this displacement volume so to this side so you keep MEP as it is so MEP will be equal to W net divided by this displacement volume okay so with this you can find the mean effective pressure for whatever may be the right. so then some statements which are related to mean effective pressure so increasing the mean effective pressure increases the net work performed when the displacement is unchanged you can see here so mean effective pressure and this work and the uh, this work they are directly proportional to each other so when you increase this the mean effective pressure will also increase okay so for the actual cycle exhaust pressure is slightly above the ambient pressure and the intake pressure is slightly below the at ambient pressure so you can see here this is a these are all statements you will get so which of the statements are true or which of the statements are not correct so you will get statements like this okay so so these are all related to mean effective pressures okay so increasing MEP increases the network performed when displacement is unchanged so only when you know these concepts related to mean effective pressure you may be able to uh, identify the statements so which is right or which is wrong okay so it can be seen that the area enclosed in the actual cycle PV process curve resembles that of the ideal auto process curve so you can see here 
so this is the curve so this curve you can see here this is the curve but uh, so when you want to draw this uh, actual cycle it will be like this the actual cycle will be like this will be the in intake and this will be the uh, exhaust like this the actual cycle will be like this the actual cycle will be like this but when you go for the ideal cycle so you can get the ideal cycle this is a pv diagram you can see here so in ideal cycles we have sharp curves we can see sharp sharp edges and in uh, uh, in uh, in this is ideal and in case of actual you can see the blended the blended curve so you may it is very difficult to find out that area in case of actual cycles so this these formulas are already given suppose uh, so it is very difficult to remember these uh, formulas okay so because you are going for a vast syllabus so it is very difficult so just you know this so with the help of this you arrive that uh, uh, equation that is uh, what are the unknowns uh, with the help of uh, pressure pv relation and with the help of compression ratio and with the help of uh, expansion ratio with the help of cutoff ratio so you arrive these uh, relations and you find the unknown so now we can move on to some problems which are related to this auto cycle so you can see this this, this is a diagram which represented this uh, what is that an as standard cycle so it is shown here for the hypothetical as standard cycle so this is shown in this uh, diagram and the mean effective pressure what is the mean effective pressure so we know the formula for mean effective pressure so it is nothing but work done by this uh, stroke volume okay so you look at this diagram what is the work done so we know the formula for work done it is p integral dv or otherwise p del v right so by this is stroke volume so when you look at this diagram the stroke volume is here is v2 minus v1 so the pressure so pressure it is changing the pressure changes from 1 1 to 2 so the pressure changes so it is p2 minus p1 into <clears throat> this change in volume is v2 minus v1 so divided by v2 minus v1 so these two will get cancelled you will get p2 minus p1 so the answer is c so you will get so you have to think so whatever may be the question so you may you may you will not uh, once again i'm saying you you will not get the same question as that of the previous years okay so the questions will be different only when you understand the concept you see here so it depends upon the concept okay so mean effective pressure then work done and uh, this is a simple uh, de for based on the definitions we arrive the formula and based on that we have uh, give, we got this answer okay so you can see here so this is the um, thing which which i have given okay in an air standard auto cycle so the air from 300 kelvin it is compressed to 690 kelvin and it is expanded from 3254 kelvin so what is the back work ratio so it is a yeah standard auto cycle and it is compressed a compressor is used and for expand an expander or a turbine is used okay so the back work ratio you have to find the back work ratio so how will you find this back work ratio so let this be wgr be the work ratio so this should be the ratio between the work done by the compressor and the work done by the turbine okay so you take the value this uh, that is my my m is 1 so i since this is an auto cycle it takes is a constant uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, volume specific heat is at a constant volume divided by t2 minus t1 and this will be for turbine cv into t3 minus this is t4 okay so how this t1 t2 t3 comes okay so an as standard auto cycle so temperature entropy diagram so an as standard auto cycle you see here so 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 so since is a compressor is used a compressor and a turbine is used you can see here so so t2 maybe 2 dash and this may be 3 dash 4 to 
थ्री टू थ्री डैश और फोर डैश ओके बट सो फॉर वेन टर्बाइन एंड कंप्रेसर्स इन रियल इट इज यूज सो यू हैव टू ड्रा द डायग्राम लाइक दिस ओके सो ही आर सो वन टू टू सो न्या स्टैंडर्ड ऑटो साइकिल यार फ्रॉम थ्री हंड्रेड केलविन इज कंप्रेस्ड टू सिक्स नाइंटी केलविन सो ये फ्रॉम थ्री हंड्रेड केलविन फ्रॉम थ्री हंड्रेड केलविन इट इज कंप्रेस्ड टू सिक्स नाइंटी केलविन ओके सो वन टू टू इज अ कंप्रेशन प्रोसेस एंड टू टू थ्री ओके it is the expansion this here the expansion takes place this is p and v you can see the volume changes and that is expansion takes place 2 to 3 uh, it is around 3254 kelvin so that means heat addition takes place the temperature increases okay so that is t3 um, t3 is around so t1 you know t2 you know then uh, t3 also you know so now you are in need of t4 okay if you find, if you know the value of t4 so you can easily find this work ratio so you leave all these things okay so t2 minus t1 by t3 minus t4 so how will you find the value t3 and t4 okay so using the relation okay so this pvt relation using this relation okay so if it is uh, that is 1 to 2 One to two is idea by idea, but one to two is uh, that is one. This is uh, okay. It's not PV. I think this uh, this is TS, not PV. This is TS. One to two. Uh, that is entropy remains constant. So entropy is constant, and two to three heat addition takes place. Okay, right. So now you know that T two by T one is equal to R power gamma minus one. In auto cycle, so T2 is equal to T1 into R power gamma minus one, and similarly T3 is equal to T4 into R power gamma minus one. So here you can see that T2 divided by this T1 is equal to R power gamma minus one, and T3 divided by T4 is also equal to R power gamma minus one. so t2 by t1 now will be equal to t3 by t4 t2 by t1 is equal to t3 divided by t4 okay so you know so in this question you know the value of t1 t2 and t3 so the only unknown will be t4 right so because this two are equal t2 by t1 is equal to r power gamma minus 1 and t3 by t4 is also equal to r power gamma minus 1 so you can equate these two sides and now the only unknown is t4 so you can find the value of t4 so interchange the numerator and denominators <coughs> so now t4 is equal to T1 by T2 into T3. So you know all the values. Find the value of T4 and substitute in that equation. You will get the answer. So these are all numerical type answers. So it's numerical statistical type answers. So that I told you earlier. So you don't have negative marks for this. Okay. So you look at this diagram. So you look at the solution for this. So this T2 by T1 is equal to T3 by T4. T4 is equal to T3 by T2 into T1. So you will get the you get the answer for the T4. And back work ratio is this T2 minus T1. Everything is there. The answer is 0.212. And no unit since it's a work ratio, so you don't have any unit for this. Okay. The next is in a heat engine. cycle the minimum pressure and temperature are 1 bar and 300 kelvin respectively the maximum pressure and temperature are 70 bar and 2000 kelvin respectively the compression ratio for the auto cycle is r the compression ratio r is v1 by v2 is the compression ratio so here you can see in heat engine the minimum pressure and temperature so draw this uh, it is given in pressure and temperature and uh, pressure and temperature so now you go for pv diagram for this 
ಉಂಟು ತ್ರೀ ಒನ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಮಿನಿಮಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಯು ಒನ್ ಬಾರ್ ದೆನ್ ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಅಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಕೆಲ್ವಿನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಬಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಕೆಲ್ವಿನ್ ಓಕೆ ಯು ಸೊ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಂಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ರೇಷ್ಯೂ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೋ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾರ್ ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾರ್ ದೆನ್ ಪಿ ತ್ರೀ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾರ್ ದೆನ್ ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಯು ನೋ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ಟು ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಟು ಟು ಸೊ ಯು ನೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ವಿ ಒನ್ ಆರ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಪಿ ವಿ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎಮ್ ಆರ್ ಟಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಿ ವಿ ಬೈ ಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎಮ್ ಆರ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ಟು ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ವಿ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಪಿ ಟು ವಿ ಟು ಬೈ ಟಿ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎಮ್ ಆರ್ ಓಕೆ ದ ಕಂಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ರೇಷ್ಯೋ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಸೊ ವಿ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ವಿ ಟು ಸೊ ಯು ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ನೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಪಿ ಟು ವಿ ಟು ಬೈ ಟಿ ಟು ಸೊ ಸ್ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ವಿ ಟು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಪಿ ಟು ಇಂಟು ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಟಿ ಟು ಇಂಟ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾವು ಯು ಗಾಟ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿ ದ ಗಿವ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಗಿವನ್ ಡೇಟಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ಪಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟಿ ಟು ಬಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟು ಯೂಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ so this p2 or this t2 should be given in terms of this p3 or t3 so for that a hint is given to you that 2 uh, to 3 so during this process that is the maximum pressure and the temperature are 70 bar and the hint is the cycle is auto cycle so we know that the for auto cycle it is uh, the 2 to 3 is a constant volume heat addition process okay so for 2 to 3 it is constant volume process so the same so that is p2 v2 divided by t2 is equal to p3 v3 divided by t3 so you can see that the volume is constant so v2 is equal to v3 so p2 by t2 is equal to p3 by t3 so now we know the value for this p3 and t3 so now this p3 and t3 can be given in terms of p2 and t2 right so you see here so this p2 and t2 can be substituted in place instead of, instead of this uh, p3 and t3 so you you see here so that is given as p2 and t2 the relation is given for this p3 and t3 so right so v1 by v2 is equal to for this p2 by t2 you can substitute p3 by t3 into t1 by p1 so the compression ratio will be equal to so you know all the values now p3 is known to you 70 bar and t3 is known to you it is 2000 kelvin t1 p1 so that is why i told you so you should be thorough with the process okay so you will get these kind of questions in uh, two marks okay so the answer is 10.5 so you can see here is c and the answer is c it is 10.5 the next is the clearance volume of an as standard auto cycle is 20% of the swept volume the as standard cycle efficiency is okay so clearance volume is given to you it is 20% of the swept volume as standard cycle efficiency we know eta is equal to 1 minus 1 by r whole power gamma minus 1 so r should be known to you so we know that r is equal to v1 by v2 v1 by v2 v1 is nothing but vs plus vc divided by v2 is vc so the clearance volume of an as standard cycle auto cycle is 20 percentage of the swept volume so this will be equal to vs plus 20 percentage 0.2 of this vs divided by 0.2 vs so this will be equal to take vs out 1 plus 0.2 divided by 0.2 into vs 
so these two will get cancelled so 1.2 divided by 0.2 so what is the answer 6 twos are 12 so 6 the answer is r is 6 so you substitute the value here r so gamma is given to you so you will get the answer and the answer is 51.16 percentage okay so this is a numerical uh, type questions okay so an ascended auto cycle has the following shape on this dynamic property line so you can see x and y coordinates respectively where it is an auto ascended auto cycle so you you do you go to this auto cycle so what are the process you have p v and t s so in p v 1 to 2 3 4 okay so 2 so you have two constant volume process volume where are volumes are here volume two uh, constant volume process and two and it is just like mirror i told you it is just like mirror so these two are constant entropy process so entropy entropy is here volume is here so so the answer is b so for this diagram for this so here you can see that so this you have two entropy and two constant volume process so this auto cycle so you have two entropy process two entropy process and two constant volume process so yeah yes this b satisfies the condition so the answer is b for this given diagram so x and y so uh, our question is the x and y coordinates are respectively what so there are x and y are x is s and y is v okay so this uh, this is the x and y okay it is given so answer is b next we can see diesel cycle so in diesel cycle you will get uh, the same as that of the auto cycle so you will get problems uh, related to pvts diagram and then efficiency and mean effective pressure okay so diesel cycle the fuel is burnt by compressing air up to high pressure so it consists of two isentropic one constant volume and one constant pressure process so this is the diagram which represents this uh, uh, for pb and ts diagram which represents this uh, diesel cycle so one to two is adiabatic or reversible adiabatic or isentropic process and two to three so this region uh, heat addition takes place so you can see here two to three so the temperature increases and similarly three to four is an expansion process there is isentropic the entropy remains constant okay and then during constant volume so heat rejection takes place so as per this pv and ts diagram for this for this process so this is pv power gamma is equal to constant and here it is the pv is equal to pv by t is equal to constant here that volume is uh, constant uh, sorry pressure is constant pv by t is equal to constant pressure is constant so v2 by t2 so at 2 to 3 you will get v2 by t2 is equal to v3 by t3 at here you will get p1 by p2 whole power 1 by gamma is equal to v2 by v1 that is equal to t1 by t2 whole power 1 by gamma minus 1 and uh, here in this process the same for this pv power gamma is equal to constant and here you can see that is constant volume process pv by t is equal to constant so volume is constant here so p1 by that is p4 by t4 is equal to p1 by t1 so these are the PV, pvt relations for this uh, diesel cycle So you should be fast enough to know all these things okay so the efficiency of the diesel cycle so efficiency of the auto cycle is 1 minus 1 by r whole power gamma minus 1 so now here you are going to add so int 1 by gamma inside the bracket rho power gamma minus 1 
divided by rho minus 1. So, this is the bracketed factor. This is nothing but the bracketed factor. Okay. So, the same here. So, instead of gamma, they have given, a, it is given as k. So, r, uh, r is the compression ratio. So, this is auto, this is auto cycle. Apart from that, these are the things, uh, terms you are going to add with this uh, diesel cycle. So, that is efficiency of diesel cycle is equal to 1 minus 1 by r whole power gamma minus 1 into 1 by gamma into rho power gamma minus 1 by rho minus 1 where rho is the cutoff ratio so this rho is the v3 by v2 is equal to v3 by v2 so you can see here in this diagram so the heat addition takes place so, 1 to 2, here 2 to 3 heat addition takes place. So, this is the region, this is the, the nothing but the cutoff region. So, you can see here V1 is equal to V4 here. This is V3 and V2 and this is the clearance and this one is the stroke wall. Okay, so while you are drawing this PVTS diagram, everything, so while you are preparing for this exam, so you, you should know about all these things. So, V1, V2, V3, which is V1 here, it is equal to V4. So, if you know all these things directly, you can substitute in the formula and you can easily get the answer within a shorter period. Okay. So, when you go for this uh, fuel which is injected at this uh, TDC at a point where high compression has already raised the, the T above this the auto ignition temperature. So, the air fuel mixture it spontaneously ignites and burns as further fuel is injected. So, at, uh, uh, at the end of the compression or before the end of the compression the fuel is injected. Okay. So, here, so about this heat of diesel, 4 power gamma minus 1, 1 by gamma into rho power gamma minus 1 by rho minus 1, right. So, the quantity inside this square bracket should always be greater than 1. So, thus, it comparing with this ideal auto cycle, the efficiency of uh, this auto so is always greater than the efficiency of diesel for the same values of uh, R and K. So, however, much higher compression ratios is possible only in the diesel engines. So, because the value of R can be, uh, can lies between this 12 to 23 so it is it improves this ideal and the actual diesel engine efficiency because there you have that value in case of auto cycle r is from 6 to 10 only so with auto cycle the thermal efficiency also improves with uh, rising k and rising rc so we can see at last after all those you can see the comparison of auto diesel and the dual uh, combustion cycle with respect to its uh, uh, compression ratio then expansion ratio and uh, cutoff ratio and also with related to its efficiencies thermal efficiencies so you can see after seeing all these uh, uh, cycles okay so the real engines uh, here so it improves uh, in efficiency by relatively slow and more complete combustion and higher air fuel mass ratio so the fuels for diesel engines so need not be as highly refined as that of this si engines okay and in case of actual diesel engines the efficiency and the fuel consumption is improved over this si ic engines with large diesel engines having the higher thermal efficiency of around 35 to 40 percentage when compared to this diesel, this auto cycle. Okay, we, now we can go to the objective type and this numerical type questions, numerical statistical type questions. So, uh, actual modern diesel engines resembles more closely to, so it is more closely to what? Okay, so you can see that diesel cycle. You can see a diesel cycle, so it is more closely to, it resembles more closely to what, okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, so the heat addition it takes place at a constant pressure process and heat rejection takes place at a constant volume process here. So, you can see, so in case of this modern diesel vehicles, the combustion starts before the end of this compression stroke. So, hence actual cycle is more closer to this so dual cycle. So, the answer is C. 
so it is more close to the uh, uh, dual cycle so it is because of this so combustion starts before the end of this compression stroke in case of this modern vehicles okay this is the reason for that so next one is in air standard cycle r is the compression ratio and rc is the fuel cutoff ratio and uh, cutoff ratio so one more thing is so the percentage of cutoff in uh, diesel so it can be given as so rho minus 1 by r minus 1 so one formula is there for this percentage cutoff suppose if the cutoff is uh, at 5 percentage so 5 by 100 will be equal to rho minus 1 by r minus 1 suppose if you know the value of r so you can easily find the value of rho with the help of this relation if you know the percentage cutoff ratio so now we go to this problem that is rc is the fuel cutoff ratio and gamma is the specific heat the ratio of temperature at the end of the expansion stroke to the temperature at the start of the expansion as compression stroke so ts diagram so ts diagram so on the pv in pv diagram you can see like this so 1 to 2 is adiabatic process entropy remains constant 2 to 3 is heat addition and 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 so 1 2 3 4 so you can see here the ratio of the temperature at the end of the expansion stroke at the end of the expansion stroke so where the expansion takes place so the expansion takes place at this point so it starts from here at uh, that is t4 that is this is nothing but 1 2 3 4 and t4 divided by the ratio of uh, the temperature at the start of compression stroke so compression starts at this point 1 so okay so the t4 by t1 so you are in need of now t4 by t1 so you can see here so t4 by t1 can be written as t4 by t3 into t3 by t2 into t2 by t1 so you this get cancelled this get cancelled so at last it is uh, what is that t4 by t1 okay so t4 by t3 so substitute the pv relation for t4 by t3 t3 by t2 then t2 by t1 substitute the pv relation for all this so you can see here for t4 to 4 to 3 it is an adiabatic process so t4 by t3 will be equal to v3 by v4 for gamma minus 1 and t3 by t2 t3 is a constant pressure process so it, it will be simply constant pressure process that is p2 v2 by t2 is equal to p3 v3 divided by t3 so the pressure is constant so you are in need of this t3 so interchange the numerator and denominator t2 by v2 is equal to t3 by v3 so now this t3 divided by t2 will be equal to t3 by t2 will be equal to v3 divided by v2 so v3 by v2 into t2 by t1 is so we know that t2 is equal to t1 into r power gamma minus 1 so that is t1 r you know v1 by v2 so v1 by v2 power gamma minus 1 you simply take this t2 by t1 will be equal to r power gamma minus 1 r is nothing but v1 by v2 so t2 by t1 is equal to v1 by v2 whole power gamma minus 1 so substitute here so v3 by v4 into gamma minus 1 and you have same powers you can bring this to one bracket and you can take this one and v3 by v2 so that is v3 by v2 into v3 by v2 that is here it is gamma minus 1 so you see here you see the pv diagram so v4 is equal to v1 so this v4 is equal to v1 so you can cancel these two so at last you will get v3 by v2 whole power gamma minus 1 into v3 by v2 is equal you will get some values for this t4 divided by t1 so you can see that v3 by v2 is nothing but v3 by v2 is nothing but the value of this ratio compression ratio or this uh, cutoff ratio that is v3 by uh, v2 so you can see here so in this so air standard side diesel cycle r is the compression ratio and rc is the fuel cutoff ratio so you see the hint so one is how it is based on rc is given to you 
that is cutoff ratio based on compression ratio is given to you so now so in this in this we know that so this is the cutoff region so that is r suffix c or otherwise rho so okay so r but as far as our given statement so rc is the cutoff ratio so rc is equal to we know that v3 divided by v2 so this is nothing but r suffix c so r suffix c into gamma minus 1 into rc so this can be written as rc power gamma into rc inverse into rc so these two will get cancelled you get rc power gamma so you the answer is e so that is rc power gamma is the answer for this given question so everything is based on this relations on uh, p v and t and then this x ratios that is compression ratio or otherwise we can say simply say as volume ratios okay so the next uh, you know, the next question is about a diesel engine having a cylinder with a bore of 250 mm a stroke of 375 mm and clearance volume is also given to you it operates at a cutoff which occurs at 5 percentage of the stroke so you have to find the as standard efficiency so you look at this diagram so pv diagram you look at the pv diagram so the piston displacement uh, i told you this is uh, pi by 4 d square is area into l so all these are given to you so you find this stroke volume and clearance volume is also given in the problem so it is around 1500 cc you add these two you will get the total volume so when you get the total volume you can easily find the value of this compression ratio okay then the value of cutoff ratio so this is the formula for that uh, diesel cycle which i have given earlier and v3 that is equal to 1500 so when you look at this uh, diagram so you can see this is v3 and uh, so if you add this vc with this area this is nothing but the percentage of stroke or percentage of cutoff okay so you can see so 1500 plus 0.05 into that value percentage of cutoff that is cutoff ratio you can find then you can find the answer the answer is 60.52 percentage so you can see that it is around 60.52 percentage so these kind of uh, so you will get only these kind of problems so at, as i told you so you can see one more problem that is based on the percentage cutoff okay so a diesel engine working on diesel cycle having a compression ratio is given that is r is equal to 16 and if the cutoff takes place at 10 percentage of the stroke then then find the cutoff ratio that is as i told you percentage of cutoff is equal to rho minus 1 divided by r minus 1 so percentage of cutoff is here what is the percentage of cutoff it is 10 10 by 100 is equal to rho minus 1 by r is 16 16 minus One. find the value of rho and then you can find the and then you can find that cutoff ratio of that cycle so you can see here what is the cutoff ratio so that is um, uh, value that is percentage of cutoff is rho minus 1 by r minus 1 10 by 100 is equal to rho minus 1 by the 16 minus 1 so you will find the value of this rho it is around 2.5 so you can see here so the answer is 2.5 that is given here okay so so these kind of problems you should be thorough so everything is simple but you have to uh, know the procedures and the basic concepts which are related to the cycle so these are the advantages of uh, this uh, diesel engine okay compared to this auto uh, cycle or diesel cycle compared to auto cycle and then these are the disadvantages so you this is more noisy and it is it gives more pollution okay so so far in this class we have seen the basic concepts of ic engines that is in lecture 1 we have seen basic concepts and then about auto cycle and diesel cycle so um, how the pvt relations has to be uh, incorporated in a problem so that is given to you and how mean effective pressure uh, formulas has to be given and how you have to go for unit conversion so in case of uh, basic characteristic gas equation that is pv is equal to mrt and uh, how you can get uh, the value of mean effective pressure in terms of a bar so everything uh, is given and also about uh, auto cycle and diesel cycle uh, 
uh, based on this uh, pressure, volume and temperature relation and then uh, based on the mean effective pressure. Okay, so with this, so you have to be thorough with these concepts. So you go to any gate questions. So you can see when you get problems on this auto and diesel cycle. So and uh, about engines, IC engines, basic concepts of engines. So you can see uh, these kind of questions only. So you be thorough with this, all these questions and uh, try to work out all those. So apart from this, you go for some other data also. There may be from super superplus data, but you should not consider this uh, superplus data are given to confuse the students okay so that means you have to be thorough with all the data which you are going to give in the solution okay so with this so I am very much thankful to you so thank you once again so we can see in the next class uh, lecture 2 we can see the uh, about a to dual cycle and its concepts thank you